We're here doing a recording of a live playthrough of Lockwood's Asylum, and we're using this fancy Vassal module that our playtester Setsy worked up so that you can see everything that's going on. Yep. So, we're going to start right away with turn one. Uh, we rolled off earlier, and I am the first player, so I have drawn four cards here, and we're going to populate the Asylum, which I will do right now. So that looks like a pretty good sp spread of monsters and allies. Uh, you will notice that some of our art is the final art, and some of it is our lame playtesting MS Paint art. Oh, come so, on. The P MS Paint art was great. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just going to be a thing. All right. So let's go forward. Uh, flipped everything off. I don't have any start of turn effects. I don't have anything in my monsters or my deck for the threat phase. So, I don't want to play any actions, we're going to go right to buying some monsters and such. So, let's go with... Hmm. I'll use these two frightened patients here. So, one and two. And we'll buy her a lovely Stalking Shadows. Oh, thank you. And another two to buy her a friendly walking autopsy. How and friendly. Actually pay for those two. And at the end of the turn, discard my hand and everything, and I don't have anything left. And I draw up to five, and my turn is done. And that goes to Elaine. All right. So refill the asylum. Get some nurses in there. Always a good thing to see. Yeah, you're probably getting a nurse, Setsy. Probably. Okay, I'm going to use the stork orderly for its action to place a stork orderly into my room and draw a card. I will do the same with this stork orderly and place the frightened patient into my room and draw a card. And using one frightened patient and the stoic orderly for a total purchase of three, I will buy the corrupt administrator. When this card enters my room, draw a card. And I discard these two. And then I will purchase the night watchman with my frightened patient and my stoic orderly. So battle phase, I have a total of four, but because of the stalking shadows, one of them has zero attack. So my frightened patient is going to be very helpful here. So three damage. So three ally damage. Yep. I will slay the Stalking Shadows, which puts him at the top of my deck. And then the Walking Autopsy does two damage, slaying my Stork Orderly and the Frightened Patient. And then Survive Effects kick in. So when I draw cards at the end of my turn, I will draw one additional card, then choose and discard a card. All right, and that's my turn. 
And play passes to your left to Setsy. Refilling the asylum slots. Boop and boop. Okay, um... Let's see. Nothing during the threat phase and no monsters in my room, so I'm not going to do any actions. Which brings us right on to the purchase phase. Now the question look at, is... Look at all the friendly allies you could buy for yourself. I could. I could go on the defensive. That seems like the right choice. Mm. It might very well be. It might very well be. On the other hand, I could send you a prisoner. I don't or like a nurse. that hand as much. Or some tentacles. But I think I'm going to play a little defensively. So we are going to spend a stoic orderly for one to buy a screaming patient. Then we're going to spend a Stoic Orderly and a Frightened Patient. No, don't forget you got your Screaming Patient's effect when she comes in. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, go ahead and put those back face down. This card enters your room. Choose a non-horror card in the Asylum and place it on the bottom of the Asylum deck. Immediately refill the empty space with a new card from the Asylum deck. We are going to actually pop the grasping tentacles one of them back to the bottom of the deck i'm pretty okay with that and that gives us an enraged skin taker hooray yeah i think i will stick with my original plan and go full defensive oh good so we are going to spend a frightened patient and a stoic orderly in order to buy a an obsessed patient. He has no entering room effect, so moving on. Going to do two stoic orderlies in order to buy us a brutish orderly. Ooh. And he has an entering room effect. Now, can I return, for future reference, can I return the Brutish Orderly to my hand? Yes. Okay, then. He can stick his head in and be like, nope, back, back out. Yeah, uh, he seems to think I'm not needed in this room. It goes back to my hand. Which gives me two produce to use. Oh, yeah. And I will be spending him to send Mason... A friendly nurse. I don't think that's a friendly nurse. I think that's an insane nurse. Eh, potato, potato. <laughs> and she has a win purchase effect, which is when you purchase this card, gain one health. So my health gets to go up by one. Um, No battle phase because there are no monsters or horrors. So going into the end phase... Those two get put back into, or put into the discard pile, and I draw. Probably. All right, so starting my turn, at the start, I refill the asylum spaces. Looking pretty red. Oh, there's a little bit green. All right, I can deal with that. And fortunately, since I have a monster in my room, thank you, Setsy. Mm -hmm. Now my frightened patients are making a little bit more. So let's skip right on down. I have threat phase, I don't have any monsters, so we'll skip right to uh, purchasing. And I'm going to spend two for my frightened patient here. And purchase a ghostly orderly for Elaine. Oh my. And I'll just put that right in your room. And he says, when I purchase this card, choose a monster in my room and place it in any other player's room. So let's just give you an insane nurse as well. She's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> and just because I think you might do some sort of shenanigans. <gasps> shenanigans. Shenanigans. Let's go. One, two, three, and four. Unfortunately, I don't have a monster in my room anymore, so the frightened patient's back down to one. And let's get some tentacles in play here. 
Those are also the gift that keeps on giving. They are. It's a Christmas. <laughs> a terrible, terrible Christmas. <laughs> yep, that sounds about right. All right, and I'm done with my turn. So I discard everything and drop to five. And it goes to Elaine. All right, I'm refilling the asylum. Oh, there's a first horror card. When this card enters your room, reveal the top three cards of the Asylum deck. Place any revealed monsters or horrors in the room. Then remove the rest from the game. Well, that's painful. And I have plenty of monsters to deal with. You're welcome. Thank you. That guy is really painful. Yeah. Especially this early in the game, he's, uh, he's gonna hurt. Well, unfortunately, I don't think I can send it your way just yet, Setsy. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> so I'm going to play my Stork Orderly for his action to place a Stork Orderly into my room and draw a card. Using two Frightened Patients, I will purchase the Cruel Nurse. And with the Corrupt Administrator and Frightened Patient, for a total of four, I will give Setsi an Enraged Skin Taker. A skin so, taker, when this card say. enters your room, you may remove an ally in your hand from the game. If you do not, lose one health. Nah, easy come, easy go. <laughs> I'm going to lose the health. Alright. So, battle phase... I have three damage, and there is six monster health. So not too great for me. I'm going to slay the ghost. And the grasping tentacles kill my allies here, and one extra damage from the nurse. Boop. So survive effects, choose a player with more health than you. Oh my. So, decisions, Mason, decisions. why don't you lose one health there? Me? Yes, you. That makes me sad. And then I will give you these tentacles back with its survive effect to place this card into another player's room. And right, that, that is makes my me turn. more sad. <laughs> Start of my turn. We are going to refill the... Uh... Asylum spaces, and we get more Grasping Tentacles. I swear I shuffled this deck. <laughs> tentacles, man. They get everywhere. Yep. Um, threat phase, I have no monsters in hand, so I'm not going to worry about that. The action phase. Now the question is, do I want to do an action or not? Okay, I do have an action. A stoic orderly is going to fling a frightened patient into the room. Because he's kind of a jerk that way. Mm -hmm. Then I draw a card, but I have no cards in my deck, so I go and return it. Return my discard pile. Shuffle a couple times, and then draw. And the stoic orderly goes into the discard pile. Um, no other actions. Okay, so, purchase phase. I'm going to reveal two Frightened Patients and a Stoic Orderly, and since I have a monster in my room, the Frightened Patients are worth two produce. So five in total is going to buy me a Furtive Occultist. Just so happy looking. <laughs> And no other purchases for me, so let's move on to the battle phase. One from the Frightened Patient and two from the Furtive Occultist is three allied damage versus three monster health. That's going to be a dead enraged skin taker. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a slain effect, 
but I do have a survive effect that is going to be come into play in a moment. So not going to put it in the discard just yet. Uh -oh. Instead, the survive effect. Place up to two monsters slain this turn into the room of the player to your right. Who would that be, Elaine? Um, I, th I think I'm getting my skin taker back. Yes, you are. <laughs> Pray. Pray. <laughs> there you go. He's just happy to be home. Hi there, buddy. And then both the Frightened Patient and Furtive Occultist go to the discard pile. End phase, discard the Frightened Patient that was in my hand. So you can see why no other purchases. And then draw back to five. All right, so my turn. And I am I done. So. so yes, it is your turn, Mason. All right, a lot of fun things going on. Indeed. So actions, probably need to do some actions here. Yeah, so we'll use the Stoic Orderly. And he's going to, the threat phase don't have any monsters. Uh, we're just going to use Stoic Orderly to throw a Stoic Orderly into the room. And then I will draw a card and discard him. That worked out just fine. Uh, purchasing. Let's go two, four, six from my three frightened patients here to buy a final girl. Mason, when you yes. do that, I'm going to activate my walking autopsy. So you can discard that final girl and instead have this walking autopsy enter your room. Oh, she was a zombie the entire time. She was, Thank actually. You. You're welcome. Pretty sure I've seen that zombie movie. Yep. yep. All right, well, that is not good. <laughs> so I have one ally damage against a whole lot of monster health, so my stoic orderly flays helplessly against it, what he thought was his ally. <laughs> and then I have five damage coming in, so he's going to take one and get himself killed. And the other four is going to hit me. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, so our effects, the Grasping Tentacles say place this card into any other player's room. And I think it's going to go over to Elaine. I mean, I kind of deserve it, so... You kind of do deserve <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> yeah... I kind of have to agree. You deserve that one. Mm -hmm. And the monster and my hand get discarded, and I draw back up, and I am finished. <laughs> well, all right then. So I'm going to refill the asylum. Oh, that's not good for you. Nope. But luckily, I don't have any monsters for my threat phase because I handed it over to you. Yay. <laughs> so I'm going to play my stoke orderly for his action to... Place the Night Watchman into my room and draw a card. I'll do another Stork Orderly combo to put a Stork Orderly down here. And draw a card, and with my two Frightened Patients, I'm going to buy Setsi a... Stitch Nurse. Yay, a Stitch Nurse. Just and what I always wanted. When I purchase this card, I gain one health for each monster in my room, and I have two. So I'm going to go up to 21. So battle phase, I have two damage, and against five monster health, I will slay the Grasping Tentacles, and then the Enraged Skin Taker kills both of these dudes. No survive effect on the skin taker, so I discard, and then refill my hand, and that's my turn. Okay. Start of my turn, we will refill the asylum. Hmm. Now what do I want to do? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Why not? So, threat phase, I have nothing in my hand. Action phase. A stoic orderly is going to be 
kind of a mean dude and throw a, a brutish orderly into the room. They're turning That's on against each other. Workplace. Yeah. <laughs> That's an HR element there. Yeah, the brutish orderly has an entering room effect, but I'm not going to use it. And then I draw a card from the stoic orderly. Which I am going to then use for another action, Stoic Orderly, flinging another Stoic Orderly into the room. They're kind of jerks to one another. They are. Which. Oop. Hmm. I will reveal a Screaming Patient for one produce. Do by myself. An unfortunate visitor. Reveal a frightened patient for two and an obsessed patient for one. To send Mason, a sinister psychologist. Dun dun dun. Yeah, could be worse. Yeah. Uh, battle phase. We have two. Allied damage versus four monster health. Not going to be enough to kill, sadly. However, she has three damage versus three allied health. She just goes on a killing spree. Yep. Squick, squick, squick. But they soak up the damage for me, so they did their job. The Stitch Nurse, however, does have a survive effect. Lose one health for every player with less health than you. Which, oh, Definitely it's me. just one person. So I just lose one health. Boop. And she goes into the discard pile. End phase, shuffle my uh, discard pile back into my deck because it didn't have any cards, and then draw my five, and I am done. All right, so start of my turn. Uh, we fill the asylum, hopefully with some green cards. All oh, okay. red. Kind of green cards. Uh, threat phase, I got no monsters in my room. So let's go to action-y type things. Uh, reveal a stoic orderly to throw a stoic orderly into my room. Draw a card. Hmm, it's interesting. It's interesting. I think we're going to do a, another stoic orderly to throw a frightened patient into my room. Draw a card from that. Let's do two here from Mr. Walking Autopsy that I drew up. And we're going to buy this Obsessed Patient. And then we're going to use three to send... Which one of these is more terrible? Reticent Poltergeist to Elaine's room. All right. Always a fun one. He is a friendly guy. All right, so into the battle phase. I got two cards with starter room things, so we're going to go with the Obsessed Patient first. If this card is in your room at the start of the battle phase, choose another ally in your room if possible. This card becomes an exact copy of the chosen card until the end of your turn. Doesn't really matter, so he's going to copy the Frightened Patient. And then the Sinister Psychologist says, If this card is in your room at the start of the battle phase, choose an ally in your room. Until the end of the battle phase, the ally is considered to be a monster and not an ally. So he hypnotizes the Stoic Orderly over here in being a monster. So I've got two ally damage against three monster health. We'll just kill off Mr. Sinister Psychologist here. And then one monster damage back over here. And the obsessed patient will take it on the chin. I don't have any survive effects, so we just get discarded. Oh, I should have discarded these two earlier, it looks like. So that's the end of my turn. All right. And we move on to Elaine. So, start of my turn, refill the asylum. That's that's helpful, that's helpful. So, Some I have green. quite the red hand, though, so... Oh, dear. Yep, oh, that's but I get to draw <coughs> oh, three my. to replace that. All right, so... That's a fun room. Mm -hmm. And um, for the enraged skin taker, when this card enters my room, I may remove an ally in my hand from the game, or lose one health, and I'm going to lose one health. Very fun. All right, I'm playing the Stork Orderly for his action to put 
a stork orderly into my room and draw a card. That guy's gonna have a bad day. He is. Yeah. Um, purchase phase, I'm going to spend the cruel nurse to buy a night watchman. I will spend a frightened patient to buy this helpful nurse. And that's all the green in the asylum. <laughs> Good luck. So, with my last two patients, I will buy... Let's see, what would you like, Setsy? We've got tentacles or this happy little patient here. I think you really want the tentacles, so... I do enjoy tentacles. <laughs> yes, there you go. All right, so my unfortunate battle phase here. So you've got the shadows at the start. Yep. So he's going to make my helpful nurse do zero damage. So I have two damage against a lot. Well, you can at least kill one thing. I can. So I will slay this ghosty. And then I have six monster damage. Yep, so they are all very dead, and there is two damage. Yeah. And then survive effects. None on him. None on the skin taker. And the insane nurse. Choose a player with more health than you, and they lose one health. I'm guessing that's going to be me. Yep. From 19 down to 18. Alright, and then I refill my hand, and that is my turn. Okay. At the start of my turn, I am going to refill the Asylum. Still mostly red. It's a scary night. In threat phase, I don't have anything in my hand. Action phase, I am not going to do any actions. Purchase phase. Now that's the fun phase. That's the phase everybody loves. <laughs> I am going to reveal a frightened patient for two and an unfortunate visitor for one, so three total, to buy myself a night watchman. Who's probably not going to enjoy what's going to happen to him. Nope. But it's all for a good cause. That cause is my survival. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go with that just because. Revealing a frightened patient and a stoic orderly for three to send Mason a faceless despoiler. Huh. Mm, just what you always wanted. Mm -hmm. A faceless friend. It has a win purchase effect, which is when you purchase this card, reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a monster or horror, place the revealed card into the room of the player to your right. Which would be Elaine. Yep. Now, let's see what I have. I reveal a frightened patient. Oh. So, back it goes. Yep. No friends for me. Nope. But, honestly, I only have one monster in my deck right now, I think. So... Because Elaine is slacking. <laughs> I think it's more because you're assaulting her. That is possibly true. But I didn't want that to show up, or that to be bought by, say, you, Mason, and then I end up with a monster from your deck. Yeah, that would have been bad. Yeah. Or possibly something I was considering, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the last purchase is going to be revealing a stoic orderly for one to send a happy insane nurse to Mason. Thank you. And her enter her win purchase effect. When you purchase this card, gain one health. So that puts me back to nineteen. And onto the battle phase. Night Watchman has a measly one damage, which not enough to kill the uh, grasping tentacles if they if they're two damage. Just throw this flashlight in the mass of tentacles. <laughs> 
I th I think throwing the flashlight would be worth two damage at this point. <laughs> this, is, this is just waving it or clicking it on and off to give it kind of a headache. <laughs> um, the Grasping Tentacles, however, have three damage versus the Night Watchman's two health, which kills him and damages me for one. The Grasping Tentacles Survive Effect comes into play. Place this card into another player's room. Now the question is, who do I want to give the Gift of Tentacles to? Not it. <laughs> well, Mason called it first, so... And Lane, have some tentacles. Oh, that worked. Lovely. <laughs> wait, wait, and... no. no. <laughs> then I refill my hand with five cards. You ruined everything, Setsy. Why? <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> All right, so I will refill the asylum. I'm thinking we're probably going to hit a horror in here. Nope. Probably. Nope. Oh. Oh, we did get a bunch of green though. We finally hit. We finally hit the. Uh... Yeah, bit of a calm before the storm. Yep. Now, do I send a horror into Elaine's room? I mean, why not at this point? <laughs> but it will be four damage that I will take, and I don't think I like that very much. Well, let's start with uh, no threat phase. I don't have any monsters in my hand, so we'll go to actions. I'm going to use the final girl for her action. If there are no other allies in your room, place this card into your room and draw a card. She, she will just storm right on in. Uh, then we'll play a Stork Orderly, and he will throw this other Stork Orderly into my room. I will draw a card. All right, I think we're going to go to Purchase Phase now. We'll do two and four to buy a Weary Receptionist. And while she's in my room, all the cards in my hand have plus one purchase. Yeah, she's a great card. Yeah, she's pretty great. Let's go three and six then. And we are going to buy a furtive occultist. And jump down to battle phase. So I don't have anything that triggers at the start of the battle phase down here. So we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven ally damage, which is more than enough to kill these two. And the face of spoiler has a slain effect. Wheel the top card of your deck. If it is a monster, place it in your room. If it is not, discard it. And it is. So, Sinister Psychologist shows up. Um, monsters deal their damage, so I've got two points coming in. So, we'll just have the final girl take it on the chin. And then survive effects. So, I've got two lovely ones here. Uh, the first one. It's a Furtive Occultist. Place up to two monsters slain this turn in the room of the player to your right. I should have given you the tentacles. Probably should have given me the tentacles. Yeah, you really should have. So, have a face of the spoiler. And the weird receptionist says, choose a card in the asylum with the word patient in style and place it on top of my deck. And you should go for the D-block patient. Mm -hmm. I would prefer not to, actually. Uh. So, Bottomized patient, oh. just go on top of my deck. Ministration. And that's all there, so I'm all finished, and I'll draw my cards. Oh my god, such a surprise. <laughs> Alright, and I'm all finished. Alright, I'm gonna refill the asylum. And those tentacles are really a problem. I have some more in my hand, though, for my threat phase. Get to draw two to replace it. Oh, why, Setsy, why? Because Mason called not it. I, I didn't know something as simple as saying not it could save you. Eh, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And the annoying thing about tentacles is while they're in your room, they say cards may not leave your room outside of the battle phase. Yep, and yep. there are so many nice options for me that I could send cards out of my room, but I just can't now. So, very unfortunate. Because of Mason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I'm going to play the Stork Orderly for his action. 
to place the corrupt administrator into my room. So when this card enters my room, I may draw a card. And then you draw one for the orderly. Uh, thank you. I will play another stork orderly for its action to drop the night watchman into my room. And then you drew a card from that. Thank you. Uh, purchase phase with a frightened patient and a stork orderly for a total of three. I'm going to buy the alert orderly. Oh, oh actually, that was a zombie. What? <gasps> uh, no. <laughs> no. Hashtag turnabout. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you were just beautiful. waiting for that, weren't you? <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> Walking autopsy that just keeps on giving. Okay, okay. Um, then, okay. With these last two cards for a purchase of three, I will get this corrupt administrator. At least it's something. And when he enters my room, I draw a card. Okay. Thanks, Mason. You're welcome. So I have three damage against... Mm, eight? Okay. I will slay this ghost. And <laughs> Casper, no! <laughs> and with the eight damage coming back at me, I, uh, all these guys are super dead. And I take two. Now the question is, for the survive effects, do I want to retaliate the tentacles against Mason or Setsy or, you know what, I think Not the it. best option is to spread the love because, <laughs> yeah, that sounds good to me. And this card gets discarded. The rest of my That's hand gets discarded. Of not, it doesn't work. Yes. And then I redraw my hand. And that is my turn. It was quite a sad and painful turn. Thanks, Mason. You're welcome. Okay. Now you know the pain. Yeah. I do, actually. All right, starting my turn. Fill the asylum. Boop. Oh, it's and Dr. Lockwood. Dr. Lockwood oh, appeared. No. Now we're all going to die quite quickly. Oh, yeah, that's gonna... That's gonna sting. While this card is face up in the asylum or any room, monsters and horrors assign damage before allies. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt a lot. Um, Stitched Nurse is in my hand during the threat phase, so she goes into my room. And then I, rev and then I uh, draw. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt. Um, oof. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm not going to do any actions. Instead, I'm going to go to the purchase phase. And I'm going to reveal an obsessed patient for one. A frightened patient for two, for three. A furtive occultist to add his three, so a six. I don't like this. A <laughs> stoic orderly for one. Making it seven. And a frightened patient for two. Making it nine. To send Dr. Lockwood to Mason. Yay. <laughs> Sorry, Mason, but uh, that's going to be a bit too painful. So... At the very least, your sacrifice <laughs> <laughs> will ensure future <laughs> turns aren't quite so bad. Thank you, I think. I'm not sure if that's a noble sacrifice or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. I mean, I think he's just trying to kill you at this point. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> it's it's payment for the faceless despoiler. 
<laughs> Speaking of battle phase, um, that is nine monster damage coming into my raw, raw nurse health. So that brings me down from 18 to nine. Uh, faceless Despoiler, thankfully, does not have a survive effect. Grasping Tentacles do, and they are going back to Elaine. <sighs> okay. Which is about right. <laughs> <laughs> Stitched Nurse has a survive. Lose one health for every player with less health than you. <laughs> which, at this point, is no one. All right, that looks good. Thankfully. Yeah, I only have nine health. Uh, so they go to the discard pile, and I draw my five, and it is now Mason's turn. All right, so we'll refill the asylum here. Green card, that's good. Uh, threat phase, I don't have any monsters since I threw it at Eileen, so that's good. Only four cards in my hand now. All right. We're going to use the Stoic Orderly to throw this obsessed patient into my room. And draw a card. Four. Five. Let's get a final girl here. I would use her ability to discard a card and get rid of something if I had cards in my hand and if the tentacles would allow it. Yep. So, um, because Lockwood's around, all the monsters and horrors do their damage first. So we've got seven points coming in. Six, Oof. five, and four. Which knocks me down to 11. And then some survive effects kick in. Yep. So you're getting Lockward. Okay. And Setsu's getting some tentacles. Yay! Just what I always wanted. That being not Dr. Lockwood. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll draw up, and that'll be my turn. Okay, then. So I refill the Asylum, Threat Phase, I have some Stalking Shadows to put down here, and draw to refill. I'm going to play the Stoic Orderly for his action, to place a Frightened Patient into my room and draw a card. So, purchase phase, I will spend the Frightened Patient, worth two, to buy a Helpful Nurse. And another Frightened Patient, worth two, to buy the Skulking Janitor. And with these two cards, for a purchase of three Setsi, you can have a Possessed Patient. Yay, Possessed Patient. Okay, battle phase. Monsters are dealing their damage first. The Stalking Shadows is going to make my helpful nurse have zero damage. So, that's a total of nine. They all die like whoa, and I have six coming at me. And then some survive effects. Mm. Mm. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of my turn, and then I'm going to refill my hand. Okay, starting my turn, and I am going to refill the Asylum. And threat phase, thankfully I have nothing in my hand. So we are going to look, go into action phase. We will use a stoic orderly for his action to fling a screaming patient into the room. Her entering room effect triggers, which is when this card enters your room, choose a non-horror card in the asylum and place it on the bottom of the asylum deck. Immediately refill the empty space with a new card from the asylum deck. We are going to get rid of one of those uh, bone creepers, because I don't like them. Oop. Eh, not quite what I was hoping. Marginally better. And I return my discard pile to my deck, because 
I need to draw, and there wasn't anything in my deck. We will use another Stoic Orderly to fling an Obsessed Patient into my room. And then draw a card. Okay, this is slightly better. This is slightly better. Okay, revealing a Faceless Despoiler and a Brutish Orderly for a total of five to buy myself a Furtive Occultist. Then revealing a Frightened Patient for two to get myself an Unfortunate Visitor. So we will go into the battle phase because I have nothing else. Remember, the Obsessed Patients gain plus one damage for every patient in your room. It's because of the, the... Obsessed Patient mm -hmm. becomes a carbon copy of the Furtive Occultist. Which means it's not a patient anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's good. You have a good point. Yeah. Okay, so seven damage coming in, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So, kills everyone. Oop. And one damage to me. Survive effect. Grasping tentacles. Murder Mason! Murder Mason! Oh, give it to Elaine so I can kill Dr. Lockwood and take, care of it, take her out forever. No, he lies. He's not going to kill her. He just sends her to me. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Mason. That's too many tentacles. <laughs> Possessed patient goes into the discard, and I draw my five. And I'm done. All right. I guess we'll refill the asylum. Uh, that's not good. Uh, threat phase, I don't have any monsters, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. So we're going to use the lobotomized patient here. Discard your hand, then draw a number of cards equal to the number of cards I discarded, plus one. Yay. Excluding this card. So use him and discard one, two, three, four to draw five cards. All right. We're going to use the final girl's ability. To, if there are no other allies in my room, place this card in my room and draw a card. We'll use a Stoic Orderly to throw a Fruit of Occultist into my room and draw a card. I'll use the action on the Sinister Psychologist. I just choose an ally in the asylum and place it in my room as if I had purchased it. So he hypnotized the cruel nurse into being my friend, which is very Yay. kind of him. We're going to use a Stoic Orderly to throw a Weary Receptionist into my room and draw a card. And then I believe we are in buying stuff purchase phase. And I think I'm just going to make Elaine stay terrible in multiple ways. So I'm going to use the Friend Patient, who is two because monsters and plus one for the Weary Receptionist, so three total. And give her a lovely Sinister Psychologist. And then I'm going to use my insane nurse, who is one, plus one from the Riri receptionist, for two. And we will give her a nice roaming cannibal. Who has so, an entering room effect. Yes. So when this card enters your room, you may remove the topmost ally in your discard pile from the game. But if you do not or cannot, you get to lose one health. All right. And that would be my your helpful nurse. nurse. And I will remove her from the game. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> she helped her last. Mm -hmm. All right, so battle phase. Uh, Lockwood says I've got 10 damage coming in. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. Ouch. Yep. Elaine gets some tentacles. Elaine gets Dr. Lockwood. And since he gets some tentacles, because you were complicit in this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm done, and I draw back up. Okay, so refill the asylum. 
not incredibly helpful. Um, threat phase, ghosty goes down, and and that's that's great. Okay. Oh my god! So you get to draw to replace him. Yes, thank you. I just looked at your room. Yep, yep that's a whole lot of wandering terribleness. Okay, I'm going to use the Skulking Janitor for his action to move the top card of any discard pile on the top card of another player discards pile. So I would like your final girl, please, Mason. Final girl. There you go. Okay. And then draw a card. That is a cheap shot. <laughs> And then I'll play the Cruel Nurse for her action to place the topmost ally in my discard pile into my <laughs> room. Uh, not that one. And draw a card. I will play the Stork Orderly for his action to play the Corrupt Administrator to draw a card. He says when he enters your room, you gotta draw a card. Um, yep. Thank you. I'll play the helpful nurse for her action to gain one health and draw a card. And unfortunately, there are just not many allies for me to buy. So with this frightened patient, I will buy a helpful nurse. Yeah, this isn't going to go well. No. Nope. No, this is this is very bad for me. Yeah, so then with two, five, seven, nine. Oh, I don't like where this goes. Oh. oh. Setsy, you can share the horror fun. Here you Yay. Go. And it has an entering room effect. <laughs> A pretty terrible one. When this card enters your room, reveal the top three cards of the Asylum deck. Place any revealed monsters or horrors in your room. Then remove the rest from the game. First one we're revealing, a roaming cannibal. Second one we're revealing, a screaming patient. So we'll toss the roaming cannibal in my room. That way I have a bit more space. And the third one is... A sinister psychologist who joins the fun. The screaming patient gets killed. Yep, forever. She screamed her last. All right, so my helpful she nurse gets possessed. So I have two, three, five, seven, eleven, fourteen. So. That goes down to 10 when those guys die. So I'm at 1. Oh. No. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. Send it to Mason. Send them all to Mason. So send them to Ghost, Mason, might... send it into a room without any allies or monsters if possible. Helpful nurse, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a monster, discard it. Um, the Roman cannibal, if at least one ally was slain this turn, this card is not discarded from your room. Okay. And then, uh, what do I do with these two? I have to be fair and share the love. So that's my turn. I draw up my five, and I'm thankful that I'm still alive. <laughs> That was very close. Yeah, that was. Yeah, not the skin of your teeth. Mm-hmm. Okay, start of my turn. We are going to refill the asylum slots. Ooh. Yeah. There aren't any more friendly people walking around out there. No. Oh wow, that's 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 Okay, so this is not good at all. 
Do you have any threat phase monsters, at least? I do not, thankfully. Okay, okay, we have one bright side to this. But, on the other hand, I have nothing that's going to help me survive this. Because I am looking at 3, 8, 10, 12 damage coming in. Plus... Plus someone will be possessed. Yep. So that's 13 damage, minimum. We are going to ignore the action phase and go into purchase phase. Are you going to buy Mason some, some friends? Yes, I am. And let's see. You spend two, two and two for four to buy Mason a... In Taker. Bloop. Alright, so when it enters my room, I have to remove an ally from my hand from the game or lose one health. Uh, yeah, I'll have it eat a patient. And then we are going to do two from a frightened patient and one from a stoic orderly for three to send Mason a. Hmm. Let's go with a possessed patient. Bloop. And finally, stoic orderly for one to send Mason an insane nurse. Who hey, you gained one health. Yeah. Yeah, I gained one health, which puts me at nine health. Now for the battle phase. Who oh boy. Grasping Tentacles has three. The Hierophant has five, so we're at eight. Roaming Cannibal, two, so ten. And Sinister Psychologist, two for twelve. Puts me at negative three health. Yep. Yep, so resolving our survive effects, the Roaming Cannibal, least, least, yeah, if at least one ally was slain this turn, this card is not discarded from your room at the end of the turn. No allies were slain, so... And it wouldn't matter since I'm pretty much dead anyway. Mm -hmm. Grasping Tentacles will travel over to Elaine's room. Thanks. And since I'm dead, the Hierophant ends up going back into the Asylum. And then I send half of my monsters rounded up to the player on my left, which would be Mason. And I have two, so just one ends up going, and that'll be the Sinister Psychologist. And then the Roaming Cannibal gets killed, and I am dead. So my turn, will we fill the Asylum? Come on, another horror. Come on, another horror. Oh. Yes! <laughs> so it's no, no, my favorite. So Head Nurse Tannis, uh, the first time this card enters the Asylum, the turn order permanently reverses. So if we had more than two players and says he was still alive, this would actually be pretty impactful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been a good one to have uh, show up on my turn, wouldn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would have really enjoyed that. That probably would have saved my life. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> but here we are. Mm -hmm. So actions. Um, I have no threat, uh, no monster in my room, but threat face. So actions. Uh, we'll use the hidden girl's ability to place herself into my room since I have no other allies there. And draw a card. Stork Orderly to place a frightened patient into my room and draw a card. I'll use the action on the Furt of a Cultist here. Name it number 03. I'm going to say three. Poof, good Put luck. All that many cards from the top of your deck and place all the reveal cards in my room. So, frightened patient, a Stoic Orderly, and an insane nurse. All right, and then I pretty much have to go to the purchase phase. So we'll use a frightened patient to send Elaine a friendly ghostly orderly. And he says, when I purchase this card, choose a monster in my room and place it in any other player's room. But you cannot because of the grasping tentacles. Yep. Unfortunately, the grasping tentacles are saying that's a no-go. <laughs> so I have 
two patient cards. So I've got two damage from the Poltergeist. Five from the patients, that's nine. Ten. Thirteen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Uh, this orderly gets hypnotized and becomes a monster thanks to the psychologist. So 24 damage. I am just all kinds of dead. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so thank you both for making that happen. My pleasure. <laughs> you are welcome. Uh, so. Survive effects. Yep. Well, I think we know where Dr. Lockwood is going. I think so. To the cafeteria. Just <laughs> to celebrate. So, with me being reduced to a huge negative number of health, uh, <laughs> Elaine has one health remaining and managed to survive the night and escape, so she wins. All right. As she often does. <laughs> uh, now, I will note there is a two points of interest, there is an optional rule in the rule book where instead of just winning when someone is reduced to zero health, you actually have to survive another turn. So with the optional rule in place, you wouldn't actually win until you finish your turn with zero health, which would mean that in this case, um, a whole bunch of monsters would show up in Elaine's room and Dr. Lockwood would chop her up into experimental parts just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. um, also, as of I believe two nights ago or so, uh, we actually changed Dr. Lockwood so that her survive effect is not her getting placed in other rooms. Uh, hasn't been updated in the module yet, but just because while her effect is very nice, you can absolutely see how it snowballs very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Her survive effect is choose a monster in the asylum and place it in any room, and then she would get discarded normally. But that definitely gives you a breakdown of the gameplay and how the game is played. Um, we ended up doing this in an, about an hour or so, which is pretty good for three players. Uh, and obviously with Vassal, the games take a little bit longer than if you're playing mm -hmm. on tabletop. But all in all, I had a great deal of fun. So thank you both for playing. Yeah. You're welcome. Nicely done. And so we'll call the video there. Thank you for watching. Sounds good.